Well, I think I got these uh, upper and lower fuselage halves jigged together. Took three days. <laughs> but it's here. I deviated from the plans a little bit. I tried using their jig setup, but it didn't really work out that well, so I decided to uh, go my own route. And in the midst of doing that, I end up going with two or three different plans of attack. And originally, well, like I said, originally I had made the plant or the blocks to the plans, laid the top half on. It didn't fit where the dam. So then I started moving things around and I could not get the uh, plane to look like it did in the drawings here. But as you can see, the datum line is above this cluster and it's an inch below the firewall tubing here. And that was not happening at all. So I started moving some blocks around trying to achieve that. I did achieve it, but the plane looked way too skinny right here. It was down like here somewhere. So I didn't like that and it was nowhere near these dimensions here, like this 24 inch. That's for this tube right here basically. So I fiddled around with everything and came to the conclusion that I'm pretty sure when they drew these plans they just like I said before made something that looked like the plane and then just started drawing in dimensions because I don't know if there's still yet yeah. that's 20 and 1 8 this here is 20 and 1 6 or 20 and 3 16 which is 1 16 bigger than what's up there no. Oh. That's a pretty large uh one sixteenth of an inch. It's like if you go by this plans, that's an inch there in that dimension, supposedly. So if you go by that, that's like three inches. And this is twenty one and one eight, which should be exactly one inch larger than this dimension, so theoretically it should be up to like there. But, same thing, this 20 and 1 8 that my uh, divider set to is a nice bit longer than this 21 and 1 8. So, 21 and 13 sixteenths. Again, this is longer. So, you can't go by the tube dimensions on these plans which is what I was trying to do before because like this tube here the door post they don't give you a dimension for that it gives you the firewall and then station 5 to 4 which is here to here so there's no actual view of this dimension so from there on back you got it the firewall you got it so I gave up on this trying to get the datum line to match the drawing because obviously the drawing is not correct. I'm hoping that these dimensions are correct because that's what I've gone to uh, focus on. So this bulkhead here is supposed to be right here in this nowhere land. So there's a tube that comes here and then there's one that goes from here to here. but. They don't give you this dimension. So I moved this bulkhead back to here where it matters. So this is now 24 inches like it is. And this is set to that 20 and I think a half inch. And this one here is set. I'm getting the right measurement from the datum line to this cross tube here. This is the station where the front of your horizontal stabilizer is attached and has the uh, tower for your jack screw for the trim and your vertical stabilizer attaches there as well so 
that's correct the tail is correct it's at a 90 degree to the datum line so the tail should be at the right angle the horizontal stab should be able to fit the vertical should also fit the firewall is set same thing it goes to uh, 90 degrees to that datum line which I do have and this firewall tube is well it's supposed to be one inch from the center to the datum line I moved the datum line down when I was screwing around with uh, trying to get this tube to line up because in the blends it shows the datum line passed right through the center so that's a pain in the ass when the tube is hitting your datum line because obviously it moves it so I moved it down an inch and just based on my drawings off of that that way it wasn't interfering with this tube but now that I got to move back up I could string my other line which is right here it's still in place as you can see up there but for what I've been at now I just left the lower line and I make a metal note make sure that I either add or subtract an inch depending on where I'm going so that's Two inches away there now. I suppose, oh yeah, I'm reading the bolt. Yeah. And originally, not this one. This is the one from back there. This one here. That was screwed across this year, but it was holding on these little half inch tubes. And the weight of the rest of the fuselage was actually putting a bow in these tubes and this point was dropping down so I gave up on that as you can see and I put these 4x4s here with some scrap tubes and some uh, half inch bolts stacked as jack bolts so that's how I got leveled up and that's how I got that uh, measurement of 2 inches lined up and for the far wall they give you a measurement in the plans of uh, this face to the center tubing and it works out that if you just stick a 5.8 tube in between them it gives you your dimension so that's all I got done top and bottom so stick a 5.8 tube in there this one used to be the uh, cross piece for right here as you can see I got rid of that and I just used two blocks and I'm going around with uh, carpentry shims or whatever you want to call them just to level things up and make some final adjustments so I used that for a brace to go from here to here because it was getting annoying every time I used to adjust something anywhere else it was pulling this back and forth and screwing up my firewall in relation to my uh, datum line because it got to stay at 90 degrees but it was still getting pushed ahead a bit so now I Stuck a ratchet strap there right quick. It's not overly tight, but it's enough to keep it there. So, firewall's in place. The tail is lined up. Realistically, as long as your tail is good and your firewall is good, the rest in between is not a big deal. Nothing important really mounts to it. If you're doing what I'm doing and scratch building everything, you're building your doors to fit, you're making everything to fit. There's nothing that's really going to be bolted on to it that matters so if it's off a little bit is not the end of the world like when you was attaching this upper structure you use this line or measurement from the uh, datum line and you positions that and then you just push your tubes to fit so if this point is up an eighth of an inch compared to what it's supposed to be then it doesn't really matter it's just your tube is going to be a different dimension and of course they don't even give you the dimension of that tube they don't even have a number that's on the uh, next page behind it is yeah, us 13 and it just gives you your 24 and a half is the cut length but that always ends up being long and you gotta trim a nice bit off so, it's not really much to worry about there. So, yeah. Lying right here is 
from here to here, as long as that's correct, as long as your firewall is right, that's the only critical things that even attaches to the uh, upper lines rounds. Now your lower lines rounds for your gear landing and all that, you want that to kind of do what it's supposed to do. And same thing, when you go putting your wing attach points on, you want them in the right plane, because if not, they'll be uh, screwing up your angle of incidence on your wing. You don't really want that. I thought about changing this plane and putting a little more angle of incidence in it, and basically raising the front up, but that would put it the same as a Super Cub or PA-18. But realistically for me, for what I'm using the plane for, I'm floats. That doesn't make a whole lot of difference because when you make your floats, the float angle gets set in relation to the wing. So if your wing is at a higher angle of attack, your floats are automatically going to match it. So then if your wing's at a lower angle of attack, your floats are going to match it anyway. So that doesn't really matter in a float plane application to an extent. So I decided to leave it as per the plans. Just for the simple fact that I'm going to be using factory made uh, wing struts. I'm not making them myself. Factory ones are sealed and oiled and all that good stuff. The original wing struts on Piper have a air word in this directive for internal corrosion. So I spent the uh, couple of thousand dollars for the peace of mind to put those struts on my current PA-12, my flying plane. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same on this one. It's not something you want failing if a wing strut fails, that's it, you're you're done. Basically. So that's why I'm leaving that alone. And as for being on skis, a little bit of angle attack, I'll get that back by extending my landing gear longer. I'm playing around in my head with making a dedicated set of landing cord landing gear just for skis. I don't really plan on ever putting wheels on this plane. Who knows, it might happen, but for skis, I might change the uh, mounting setup. Normally, your ski tube just has a tube with an inch and a quarter diameter inside, or inch and a half, depending on what your spindle size is. And it just slides over, but you got all that twisting of a ski on a tube that's just sticking out. And skis had a lot of Twisting force to your landing gear much more than wheels do. Especially if you land with a little bit of a side load on your gear. You can, or if the ski's hooking something, you can really bend up landing gear pretty quick. So I might design something to, so the skis mounts, I guess a little more like a snowmobile. Instead of having the tube slide over a spindle, I'll have a... Uh, say this is your ski here instead of coming up and having a tube I'm a terrible dryer as you can tell instead of having that slide over with a nut on here I have something with just two little bushings like that and then the gear legs will come down and just put one bolt and one bolt that gives you a lot more distance so that's a horrible drying but Hopefully you can understand, if you get your points spread out wider, it's less stress on your actual spindle. It's right here, it's just going to bend right here, so your gear legs comes up off of that. So if I make the gear legs come out and widen out, it should uh, make things a little better. So I might play around with that. That's a long ways away from here. So I think I'm at the point now where I can finally start putting some joining tubes in and get these two halves put together. This has been by far the hardest part of these drying so far. I'm hoping the upper structure goes on a little better. It should. It gives you a pretty good detail on how to build that. And it gives you a pretty good detail on where it got to go. So, fingers crossed, it goes a lot smoother. 
So that's it for that. I don't really have much more to say about it other than if you're building one of these, best thing for you to do is uh, make up your own bulkheads and just worry about getting your stations in the uh, right place so it matches the drawings. Don't fixate too much on the look of it. As I showed you, these drawings are nowhere near to scale. So, just because the datum line here goes above this tube, don't make, don't worry about it not actually doing that in real life. Because it ain't going to happen. Well, you can make it happen, but all the measurements are going to be way off of what's on here. So that's the biggest thing I can say for advice make sure your firewall is square make sure your tail is square get these three stations of these dimensions and make the less, rest of it look good it's realistically about all you can do unless you got a PA14 few slides laying around that you can copy in which case I recommend just using that few slides <laughs> anyways I'm going to get back to work now I'll be back when I got some progress to show you. So here we are, making some progress. And most of the uh, 58 tubes fitted and tacked. These two here, not tacked yet. Only 58 tubes left is what's up front. And uh, the two that goes right here, same thing, one on the other side. But I'm not doing those because, well, really, I can't. Because they intersect between uh, this joint here, which as you can see is my jig location. So, tube can't go there yet. And it comes down and intersects right here at the bottom of the tail post. And that ain't the tail post. That's just something to hold my datum line. So, I got to wait until, well, everything else is done, really. Once I got... The front structure done and I can start taking jigs out. I might make up another one just to go right here temporarily or somewhere around here anyway just to hold this in place. Then I can take that one out. Although I might not need to really because it's supported up there. There's not much of a force. Realistically I can just deal with that as I'm welding the uh, tail post in. Actually, I might just move this one ahead. Just cut that notch out bigger for the bottom lines rods and move it up. Take this uh, block out. I'm not going to now because I think they'll pop down, but I'll wedge up the uh, lower lines rods up here a little further just so they're in place. And once the tail post is fit, this here can come out. Well, honestly, that one could probably come out right now. This ain't going to drop because that diagonal there is in place. And it ain't going to slide back and then this rotate down because you got all of them now keeping your upper and lower in line fore and aft. So, honestly, right now it is pretty sturdy. Not going nowhere. Yeah, I just knocked down my tape them one that's not a big deal. They're not tacked in yet because I gotta put them in the lathe and clean up the ends. And I gotta clean up the tubing. And right here at this station I gotta drill a hole for the gases to vent through and oil. So still a few extra steps. I haven't been drilling into the top lines rounds. Just because I don't want to go pushing up on them with a drill. It wouldn't be bad now. They're pretty sturdy in place. But at first it was only gravity holding down this fairly light structure. And I spent a lot of time leveling it up perfect and lining it up on center and all that. So I didn't want to screw it up. Drilled on the bottom should be good enough anyway. It lets the vent or the gases vent out. And when I 
oils the tubes, it will flow from the lower lines runs into the uh, side tubes. So they'll still get oil, they're still venting. And honestly, this probably keeps, it might be better because when I oil the top tubes, instead of the oil running the line, getting to the first hole and then going down the diagonal and getting into the lower lines runs, it might actually stay in the top section and disperse then into the cross tubes when I uh, rolls the fuselage around. So, and might be for the better. I didn't plan it that way, honestly, but that's how it's gonna work out. So, after this one gets fit, SS12, so S11, I think then I get some bigger tubing. Nope, that's still 58035. S8 is the bigger one. Yeah, that's three quarter 035. So, I'm just trying to think now. Uh, I gotta come up with a measurement here for this. I went through the plans and I found that in the uh, door drying, it showed this span here 16 inches and here in the drying is shown from this corner down to here is 13 and three quarter. So that's 29 and three quarter, theoretically. But I think this 16 inch measurement, where it's on the door, that's allowing for clearance between door and the door frame. And plus, this is the bare tubing. There's a, like a steel sheet metal structure that goes around it to act as a door frame kind of deal. So, you got to count for that too. So, that 16 inches is probably uh, on the lower side of what it really would be. Because, nine, let's say it was 19 and 3 quarter. If I can do this with one hand. 29 and three quarter. This is gonna be misery. Come on. As you can see here now, I'm kind of getting 31 inches. So, so you're leaving at 31 inches, which really isn't that far off. 29 three quarter it's only an inch and a quarter and it's on a diagonal so if it was a straight line measurement it'd be a little worse but for diagonal measurement and being a non-critical measurement at all i think i'm gonna just leave it the tube is relaxed here it's in a nice looking line so i think we're just gonna Leave it like it is. I'm gonna close this in now with tubing and if nothing else, the lower half of my door will be a little bigger than uh, most, which isn't too bad. So that's that. And I don't know if I uh, mentioned this before, but uh, this tube's not even gonna go in the uh, The new uh, plan, or the new, I think it's Charlie Center has the STC for this. I believe I mentioned this before, but this tube gets deleted, these two, and this S7 from about here up is no longer there. Uh, at this intersection, he comes across like that, keeps that at 90, and then Instead of S7 going up here like that, basically yeah, I'm just going to use that tubing and you add them in something like that. I can't remember the exact number of tubes. I have a picture. I don't have any drawings. Yeah, that has that in. So your door opening is squared off. And in real life, plane's going to set it like that angle so your door bottom is fairly level in a three-point attitude. Um, floats, it's going to be 
still a little angle down, but I don't mind that. It's a hell of a lot better than this triangle. And on the pictures I've seen, I'm not sure if it's because of this door modification or if it was a an upgrowth on the SDC thing for the gross weight. Because uh, I noticed there was some extra tubes added in back here. And on the PA-12, that is required for the 1935 weight SDC. But there you got a tube going from here up to that cruster there. Like I said, I don't know if that's for the door. It seems like it is because it's intersecting the rear door post tube at the same place that this lower tube intersects. So it might be because of that. I'm thinking it is. I'm going to sit down one day and look and try to figure out how the forces are all acting on this and make a decision on whether or not I need that tube because I was kind of hoping to put a baggage door in here so I can get that stuff behind the seat without having to get in and climb over the seat but it just will dry it in well if there's a tube there like that your baggage door options gets uh, pretty limited you can have a little small stupid one here or you can have one up here It'll probably the one up here because my door or my uh, floor is going to be lying here somewhere. I keep my floor flat right as far as I can. Uh, it'll be from station two back to probably station six. I think I might end it a little further up. I'm gonna see. Looking at these drawings is hard to tell when I get everything laid up and sees where the back seat is gonna go and I'll see how much further I want the cargo space. The, uh, you can't go really too far in the back usefully anyway because once you get back here your weight balance gets affected pretty uh, easily and you can end up with too much tail weight pretty fast so you can only put like 20 maybe 30 pounds back there I know behind the rear seat and the 12 I'm pretty sure mine's placarded for 50 pounds maximum baggage so i don't know if that's a factory pa12 thing or if that's because mine has the higher gross weight of the 1935 package so but that's all things to uh, figure out i can add this tube in after very easily i'm gonna leave it out just for now i'm gonna try to figure it out talk to some people see their opinions people that got more uh, knowledge and experience with this than I do because from what I've gathered a lot of times with STCs they just add paper or add tubing in to please the FAA like the upgrowth on the night or in the PA-12 to put it at 1935 instead of 17 something like I said you adds in 38 tubes all over the place back here and Piper built this plane, the PA-14, they upgraded the gross weight right from the factory. And they never added in none of those tubes. And the PA-12 and the 14 is almost exactly the same. All they did was make this uh, lower panel tube here wider, which widened out in front of the uh, fuselage in the cockpit area. But from the back seat back, it's PA-12. The floor is still PA-12 shape. Said, literally that's the only thing they did they widened that tube i think nine inches or something like that and adjusted everything around it to make it fit and they had a gross weight of something around 1900 pounds i'm not sure the exact number on the pa-14 from piper but they had a higher weight than 12 and they never added any tubing they actually took tubing out on the pa-12 on your back seat the the top tube that goes across here for your backrest that stays in place and the bottom seat tube stays in place and on the 14 they made the tubes just slide into uh, little notches and you can take the seat out and fly around all day long so 
Faber obviously didn't think all those little tubes were necessary, but whoever done the STC and pleased the FAA, they had to add them all in, so. That tube might not be necessary. If it wasn't for my cargo door, I'd just add it in. I wouldn't even think about it, but it really screws up my cargo door plans. So, and I might be able to do something a bit different. I might be able to dog leg it like to do with the this tube here, I won't be doing that one like that. Uh, it's gonna come over on an angle like this, and then down, and then another tube goes over like that. So you can actually get something in there. And that goes in this location here. So I might be able to dog leg this one. Uh, I'm not really sure how you would go about it, but I'll uh, ask around anyway. See what I can come up with. Yeah, that's where I'm at now. So I'll get these other two, uh, or another, another two. I'll get these other couple tubes added in, and uh, we'll go from there. Back at it again here tonight. Shooting this on GoPro. I've been back and forth between GoPro and my phone. Uh, for some reason, the GoPro video comes out really shaky. It looks perfectly stable here when I'm filming it, but. When I was watching it and editing it, it's all over the place and it's driving me nuts. I don't know if my GoPro screwed up or what time to go. I don't remember that when I first got it, but who knows. So what I'm at here now, I showed you, I'm pretty sure on what I does to uh, cope the tubes in normal situations. But lately here, where you got different size tubes intersection into uh, other different size tubes. Right here is not bad because it's two three quarters, but you know sometimes you're getting into stuff like this where it's a three quarter and a one inch and that's an inch and a quarter, and you're not really intersecting them at the same angle. This thing is not square, so. So you got that intersecting in there and then tying into this one. You got compound angles on the go. So rather than using the paper templates, I've just been uh, trying to do it. I do have this printed off. That's the template for right here. Because it's easier just to use a template for that. That's not too bad here. But for up here in this joint, what I've been doing is uh, just drying it by hand, basically, which I'm going to show you now in a second once I figure out how to get this GoPro set up. Okay, I think you can see what I'm doing here. So, this tube got intersected in here, and it's got to go on the same plane as the string. So, something like that. So basically what I do is I got two of these welder's pencils. I keeps one sharp and I keeps one pretty blunt just so it's further away. So I'll get this Kind of where it wants to be. This is a multi cut thing here. The first one's always a bastard because it's kind of smooth here. So it likes to fall out, as you can see. But this is just a rough, rough guide here. And after you cut these first notches, those notches helps. Hold this in place. So yeah, you can see I got that mark. That mark, that's our initials. We'll grind them out now and uh, it'll fit up a little further. Same thing, mark it again and mark it again. And that'll get us pretty close. And then at that point, I'm gonna work on 
the back, get that close. Because right now I'm marking it with this, I'm gonna exaggerate this, but the cock do it this way. So when I get to the bottom half coped out, then I can kind of get it in here. It'll be down a little ways, not this bad, but it'll be down here. I'll remark the top again, remark the bottom, and I just keep slowly taking a little bit more and more out every time until you get what you want. So we're gonna go grind this out now. Okay, I got you guys stuck on my uh, three jaw chuck. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. And you can't. Okay, I got my tube stuck in my three jaw chuck. So like I said, just grind this out. Don't worry about getting too precise on the lines, this is like an extremely rough cut. Okay. Here's our initial grind. Back here again. Make sure you get it the right way. As you can see now, it's much less prone to falling out. And on the back side here, just wherever the tubing touches, put it on your line. Uh, I strung my line on the outside of the tube and put this blue mark, so I got something to reference off of. Right there. Same thing again. Okay, so there we have it. Got another mark, another mark. You can see they're skewed a little bit. That's because, like I said, the tubing is hanging out. So, back to grinding again. So, here we go again. Might want to tighten that up. You guys see? Yes. Okay, this next one there, see what that fits like. We're getting there.
needs to be uh, rotated out a bit. Alright, we're going to take some off of this edge here. I'm just going to grind it out with the little bench grinder. Okay, we're doing pretty good here now. Long way to go, but gotta come all the way up to here too, so. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start cutting in. this bevel, or cope. So you mark your tube, right where it's touching, and that's where you want it to cope in. And then your template will line up with that mark you made. Now you can eyeball it like that, just looking down the tube. Or you can try to make a mark if you want. But your eyes are a pretty good tool, so. Yeah. I have no idea if you guys can see that, but it's lined up. And for now, I'm going right to the edge of the tube here. Take that. Color it in. Don't worry about being neat, just grind it until you can't see no more silver. Okay. We got a lot to remove. Ten snips. You can cut through this old 35 tubing pretty easy. There's a deep cope. I go in one side with the yellow. And then you can cut from this side with the green. If you're wondering why that is, as you can see the uh, Cutters run opposite sides. Red is same as this. Red is for right hand cuts. These are for straight. Or I might have that backwards. No, these are right hand. Red is left. So, left in. Let's clean it up now. Yes, I know you should be wearing gloves, but I keep a good hand on it. If it gets away, my hands goes with it, so I don't worry about it. 
I haven't got bit yet by it, so I must be doing something right. Okay. We're getting somewhere. So I'm gonna bring this up some more. It's not fitting as nice as what I want. If this fits perfect and we're still down here, I'll take some off of this end because one coat is a lot easier to deal with than two. So, yeah, we got a lot to come off. We got to close up this gap, so back to the blunt one. Step a little bit. Yeah. On pencil. Okay, there we go. It's good. This is seven eight, these are three quarter. Yeah. Technically if you cut this square or in the center to cult, you would be sticking out here a little bit. But I can't really remember what goes on the outside of here, but I'd rather have this all flush. So as you can see, this side is thicker than in here. Nothing really I know goes in here size interior panels and that don't matter in there really. So as you can see I'm grinding it offset I'm keeping this flush. So we're gonna grind this again. I'm not gonna show you that because well you've seen me grind it. Just keep doing it. Well there we go. I just kept doing that over and over. That blue line is not lined up perfect, but that's was there for just a rough reference. As you can see, it fits pretty darn good everywhere. And just to show you that it is actually lined up, there it is with the string. And there's another tube that goes in that continues lying where that string is here at station three. So. I gotta make another one of them tubes now to go in that location. But, as you can see, it works. It makes a good, uh, a good coat. Honestly, I've been having better luck with this than using the paper templates. Just like I said, because of the multiple angles going on and different size tubings and stuff like that. This is slower, I will say that. You've seen how many cuts it took me to do it. Well, you didn't see all of them, but after I stopped, I think I done four more light cuts up there, and I done one more here on the end. So that's that. That's another way of uh, going about this. Uh, you can buy a tubing culpin device it clamps the tubing in and there's a hole side that is on a mandrel you just use a hand drill or something and you can drill them that way I was gonna get one of them but the ones I seen that were affordable were not the greatest looking quality and they just use a hole saw and I'm not a big fan of hole saws with steel honestly I find they're a little too uh, out of round and stuff for my liking. 
And then you got the other way, you can take a piece of this and put it in the milling machine and come in with an end mill and cut it. I thought about that, but it's kind of hard with a vertical milling machine like I got. And I'll show you. Sorry I'm shaking around the magnet on the bottom of this GoPro is pretty uh, strong. So, grab a random piece of tube here. If you had an end mill in this, in order to get the angles, it got to be up and down like this. So, trying to hold that in the vise, trying to get it angled correctly, and actually get to the thing to mill it out. Slight angles like this is not too bad, but I mean, that's the most you can grab there. And then your table's going to be way to hell up here. It's just not the greatest way of going about it. Especially if you get a longer length of tubing, because obviously if that's there, it's going to go on up and to the ceiling. Well, it'll be a while before it gets to the ceiling here, but yeah, honestly, it just seems like more hassle than it's worth. I mean, you got to worry about then the tube twisting in the vise and shit like that. So I've opted to not go at it. Honestly, I haven't even tried it. This was a horizontal milling machine where the spindle came out like this, say. It'd be easy. You could just take your tubing, clamp it to one of these rotary tables. Sorry if that was loud. But you could put like a block on one of the T-slots to index it in. And there's a graduation going around the side there with degrees. So you could just angle it to whatever the hell you want it. And then your tubing would just stick off the table like this and go off wherever, which would be much more convenient. I would like to get a horizontal milling machine for that reason, but I haven't come across one, and honestly, I don't really know where I'd put it. I'm getting really low on space. This void here is where my TIG welder usually lives, but that's been over there now because of, well, this project. But between the, the two lathes, especially this one, this thing is massive. Just for reference, that's a 32 inch truck. Weighs in excess 800 pounds, I'm pretty sure. Uh, when I took the truck off, when I got laid, I used my buddy's high boom on his pickup. It's just a small hydraulic boom. And I got a pressure gauge on the hoist cylinder. And when we picked this up, the pressure was higher than picking up a 4BT Cummins, which is a four cylinder diesel. So, I'll tell you how much weight is in this. It is not light. I tried to put it up here. I tried to mount it to the lathe with that folding engine stand thing. Hey man, I tell you, one it started to get high enough to be able to get to the spindle, it got really sketchy. The stand was starting to bend and was starting to bow out this way and want to tip over. I stopped before I did something stupid. So I actually ended up mounting this on with my loader. I hung it off the quick coupler and I just Drove in the door here, I had enough room between the ceiling, and I just got it kind of close and did the whole head of the door checks, get back in the loader, adjust, get out and in and out. And it wasn't too bad actually, because on articulating loader, I just used to swing it or turn it, and that would swing the chalk in. And once I got the dowels in, uh, just shove it in and tighten one of the cam locks and you're good to go then. But I'm getting off topic here. Yeah, that's the other way you can cope the tubing. Milling machine. But, like I said, I've been just doing it this way. I don't mind it. It's not that bad, really. If you're in a rush to build a few slides, like if you're doing this 
like production or something. Obviously, you wouldn't be doing it the way I'm doing it. Piper didn't do it that way. They actually had a pretty uh, neat machine for coping and tubing. And they'd used a pattern. I think he used another tube that was already cut as a pattern, actually, and it went in this weird machine. It spun the tubing around, and it was like a sheet metal nibbler. It was just a little, I don't know. I don't even know how to explain it. But anyways, it just takes little half moon circles out and the tubing just rolls around inside like acting as a cam and it just nibbles its way around. You don't get as nice as a finish as that. Well, that's not a very good finish. I got to deburr everything yet, but. Hey, it works. As you can see, it fits in there. Good to go. So anyways, I'm gonna wrap that up for this. Cause uh, that section was a lot longer than what I was expecting it, just to be coping a bit of tube, so. I'm gonna end this episode here now. I believe this is episode five, I think it is. So we're moving along. So I'll be back probably when I get the rest of these tubing come in, or not come in, I got the tubing, but when I get the rest put in. Then I'm gonna work on the door opening, that'll be another episode I'd say, discussing that and doing it. So, see, or episode six will be doing the door openings. They're a bit different than what plans calls for, so we'll go through the detail on that. And after that, uh, well, I gotta add in the diagonals, but I'm probably gonna do that off camera as well. So yeah, keep a lookout for episode six. We'll do the door openings, and then after that, it's gonna be start to add in this top structure. And then that's when it starts to look like a fuselage. So, if you're interested in this, if you like the videos, hit the like button, subscribe if you're not already, and have a good one, everybody. And comment if you got any questions, obviously. Take it easy.